the authors have no financial interest in the subject matter of this presentation. Hi everyone, I am Dr. Vidushi from Suvi Eye Hospital, Kota, Rajasthan, India. In this video, we discuss some aspects and tips to become the best in our chosen field. Ophthalmology is a wonderful medical branch with highly advanced surgical techniques and great results so our patients are generally quite happy. So what are the qualities needed to become the best ophthalmologist? Of course, the patient care is the first and foremost. We have to give good results as well as ensure that we give extremely good care to our patients who are then satisfied with us. We also have to learn the art of handling difficult and dissatisfied patients which is becoming increasingly important in today's world. And we also have to find time to take keen interests in our medical societies as well as in academics, which includes teaching, research, being up to date with in our highly technology intensive branch. So when it comes to patient care and being a popular ophthalmologist among your patients, you need to have certain personality traits, uh, which will go a long way in making you the best ophthalmologist. And so we must learn to be cheerful. A person who genuinely enjoys interacting with different kind of people can certainly make a good doctor and a good ophthalmologist. We also have to learn to be available for our patients and give them time. We must acquire the pers habit to become a good and patient listener who doesn't interrupt the patients. So how young ophthalmologists can imbibe all these qualities? The first thing for young ophthalmologists to do is to learn and hone their surgical skills as best as possible and the earlier they do it the better because later on with family responsibilities children etc it becomes difficult to travel to different areas and learn surgery from the best possible centers for learning the soft skills of dealing with patients it is a good idea to observe seniors interacting with patients if you plan to have your own practice, you need to know the basics of financial planning and administration and also observe the facilities that are provided in good practices. By default, most ophthalmologists end up starting their own practice, but practice patterns are changing rapidly with more emphasis on group practices, shared facilities, etc. Whatever the kind of practice that we want to get into, we have to quickly learn the basics of various aspects of practice management and we have to realize that we have to go beyond clinical care to satisfy a patient and beyond patient management to maintain a financially growing practice. We all know that some doctors have a huge connect with their patients and this is what makes them very popular. A lot of it is an inborn personality trait but we can develop some tips of our own to ensure that we have a good rapport with our patients. One of the things we can do is to know about their uh, jobs or hobbies or where they belong and since it is difficult to remember these things, it is a good idea to write a brief note in their papers about these unique things and discussing about these patients often develops a very good rapport between the doctor and the patient. And in today's world where patients from different backgrounds come, we must always respect the religious beliefs of the patients if they share them and if these beliefs have a bearing on their treatment. Often we uh, come across patients who have a poor prognosis and handling these patients properly is very important. We must explain all patients in their own language in detail about the prognosis of their condition. We must give them time to think and make an informed decision and never be in a hurry to advise surgery or any other procedure in these patients. And ask all the attendants along with the patient to read the informed consent paper, take their own time to understand it give them time and opportunity to ask questions if they have doubts and then take a collective decision after careful consideration of pros and cons. And in very difficult cases, it is always a good idea to encourage a second opinion because these are the things that will keep us away from trouble later on if these patients are still not happy with their results. Uh, despite all our efforts, some patients are still unhappy or dissatisfied. Some of the reasons why patients are unhappy relate to waiting times. If there is a prolonged delay in seeing the patient or prolonged waiting during surgery, they often become unhappy. Often they are unhappy because of rude behavior by some unprofessional staff or if there is a less than adequate explanation of the surgical procedure that they have to undergo or the follow-up visits and the follow-up instructions that they need to be explained. Of course, if there is poor visual outcome after surgery, they are unhappy and inability to promptly attend to emergency patients is also a problem which fortunately we do not encounter much in ophthalmology. 
If despite all our efforts some patients are dissatisfied, we must listen to their complaints. Just venting out their complaint in front of the doctor often cools down these patients enough and then they are willing and more reasonable to understand what the doctor has to say. Never lose your calm by listening to an agitated patient. Be patient and you really have to practice this and do not brush aside their concerns even if they seem trivial to us because that makes them even more agitated. We now come to the important issue of marketing. Uh, traditionally, we have been told that marketing is not something for our dignified profession. However, things are changing now, but we must always remember the ethics and the appropriateness of whatever marketing we use so that it is in line with the dignity of our profession. So now that uh, medicine has uh, become a sort of a service and doctors are considered a service providers and patients are customers, we probably need to step down from this high pedestal of taking a position of no marketing at all because it is no longer an unhealthy world and especially when the healthcare world is being driven by corporates now, marketing is probably here to stay. The most important thing for us to remember is that marketing is not synonymous with advertising and probably most of the concerns relating to marketing in medical profession come from equating it with aggressive advertising. So marketing can be of different types. We can have cold call marketing in the initial phase to contact a wide audience. We can have inbound marketing which is web based and we can also have in-house marketing which is often neglected to uh, display brochures and uh, information about the facilities that are available in our practice. A growing concern in the medical fraternity is the tendency of posting internet reviews by patients. Often these reviews are posted by dissatisfied patients because dissatisfied uh, patients seldom uh, take to the internet to vent their satisfaction and many of these patients uh, are unreasonable. Uh, in this scenario, it is a good idea to get one of the staff to gently suggest happy patients to also post a review so that these negative reviews are countered. The other suggestions to ensure a good practice with good growth is to ensure a robust feedback mechanism so that your patients who have often been to different practices and can compare these practices can give you good suggestions and we must promptly act on them. We must do any activity that instills a sense of team in all the stakeholders in our practice and staff training is extremely crucial it should not be neglected because patients are always more reassured when everyone in our practice speaks the same language and they will often ask questions to more than one person. So to conclude, choose very carefully the kind of practice that you want to do depending on your personality. Ensure excellent surgical training and also focus on the soft skills. Employ and use good quality staff and then use these staff to delegate most of your work except the core surgical work and all of this will combine to make you a good ophthalmologist. Uh, here is an article on the same topic that was published by us in Cataract and Refractive Surgery and um, we would encourage anyone interested to go through this article and please send your feedback at the email given. Thank you.